or via short sale. My name is Mariah Martin, and I'm with Keller Williams Real Estate, and I will be your host for this evening. This is a Lehigh Valley Consumer Awareness Campaign, and this is coming from the Pennsylvania market of the Lehigh Valley. This is brought to you by five Lehigh Valley real estate agents who care. So let's get started. Just so you know, our local real estate agent sponsors is um, sponsored by and made possible by the following Lehigh Valley real estate agents. Myself, Mariah Martin, I am a certified distressed property expert. I'm a licensed real estate agent who specializes in short sale and foreclosure resources. And I'm uh, also certified by the National Association of Realtors. I specialize in helping homeowners avoid foreclosure via short sale, and I'm also a buyer agent specialist. We have Reggie Regulus um, as a sponsor, and also Dan Witt. His areas of focus is the East Penn, Southern Lehigh, and Bethlehem areas. John Dahlgren, he specializes in residential investment and short sales in our area. And of course, Scott Tomlinson, he's an associated broker in ABR and SRER designation. Because, you know, when you're dealing with something as important as your home, you really need the right real estate professionals helping you one step at a time. So what are we going to go over as part of this consumer webinar? Well, there's a lot of information that you need to know about uh, short sales. So welcome, we have Alley homeowners. And um, this is going to be an informative webinar. And you are going to learn, number one, what is a short sale? Number two, who can help me with a short sale? Number three, what does it cost to do a short sale? Number four, what is a loan modification? Number five, how does someone qualify for a short sale? Number six, how to interview a real estate agent to help. Number seven, what is a short sale negotiator? Number eight, how a short sale offer is negotiated. Number nine, how long does a short sale take? Number 10, does bankruptcy stop foreclosure? And then to end our seminar, Number 11, does short sale stop foreclosure? Number 12, short sale versus foreclosure. And number 13, how to easily spot and avoid costly short sale scams. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is that we do have a full house today, but um, there's a lot of people uh, viewing this webinar, and it is a live webinar. But what we're doing is we're recording the webinar for the benefit of those people who can't make it on a scheduled webinar, so then they'll be able to listen at any time. So what we'll do is we will hold questions until the end of the webinar. And of course, we will stay on longer if needed, so that's not a problem. Or we will give you contact information at the end of the webinar, so you could uh, email or give us a call with further questions. So what is a short sale? The definition of a short sale is a transaction in which the owner sells a property for an amount that is less than what is owed on the mortgage loan or other lien attached to the property. The lenders must consent to the sale and voluntarily release their lien. The lenders choose to either forgive the remaining debt or release the lien while still pursuing the seller for some or all of the balance. Typically, a seller will not be allowed to receive proceeds from a short sale transaction. So who can help me with a short sale? Well, number one, what you should be asking yourself is, who is qualified to help me with the short sale? You should have an entire educated real estate team to help you. Number one, an educated real estate agent who can provide you with solutions to assist you with your options and is working with an entire team of educated short sale professionals. And the number one task for your real estate agent is finding a buyer for your home. 
The second person you need to be associated with is an educated attorney, provided at no cost to you, who can protect your best interests and make sure after settlement that this is behind you forever. Number one task, reviewing the final bank approval letter with you and advising you of your liability. It is very important that you have an attorney reviewing that letter. I've been doing short sales since 2009, and I'm not going to act like I understand what those bank approval letters mean. It's very legal. An attorney must read that and tell you what your liability is. If an attorney is not representing you at no out-of-pocket cost to you, you need to find somebody who can help you. Obviously, we're here to help you. Number three, an educated short sale negotiating company who is focused on processing your short sale directly with your mortgage company and moving your short sale file forward weekly while communicating with you and your entire real estate team. Their number one task is getting short sale pre-approval and the final approval. Working with these people is the way short sales will get accomplished and closed. There's no other way to do it. So what does it cost to do a short sale? Well, there should be very little out-of-pocket cost to the seller for a short sale to be processed. But in order to process a short sale correctly, there are two possible costs that a seller may be responsible for if a short sale is done the right way. Okay? The number one fee will be a title fee of $150. This should be the first step in starting the process of a short sale file. Those who are uneducated in processing short sales would not understand why we need this and why this is needed. But we must know all liens and judgments attached to the seller and the property up front as everything must be negotiated to get the final short sale approval. These things that may be unknown to the seller or the real estate agent or anybody without doing title search would include IRS liens, state liens, or municipal liens. Municipal liens would be created if water, sewer, or trash bills were not paid. And also credit card liens plus other mortgage liens like um, um, a home equity loan. Uh, commonly known as a HELOC, okay? The other cost that a seller may have if a short sale is conducted correctly is a resale inspection fee. Depending on where the subject property is located will depend on if the local municipality will require a seller to obtain a retail inspection to sell the property. The seller is only responsible for paying for and scheduling the inspection. Any repairs required are the buyer's responsibility. But it's best to have this done at the same time the property is listed on the market so the buyer is informed of these details when making an offer on the property so there are no surprises later. The estimated cost for this type of uh, inspection, if it's required where the home is located, is between $50 to $100. Some municipalities do charge up to $150 in the Lehigh Valley, which involves Lehigh and Northampton County areas. Now these are red flag issues for those people that do not understand why there are a, there is a title fee or a resale inspection or why we do this. Okay? Number number one red flag issue is if a real estate agent tells you that you do not need to pull title before starting the short sale process. I have witnessed personally a transaction where final bank approval was given and then title was pulled for the buyer after final bank approval was given and a $9,000 municipal lien was found. And this is after the buyer waited six months. So unfortunately, because the short sale was not conducted correctly and title was not pulled first, we waited around for six months for no reason and unfortunately, the seller's house went to share sale, and then it came back on the market as a bank-owned home. So if a short sale is not conducted correctly, it's a complete waste of time. Number two, 
waiting until final short sale approval is given before having the retail inspection completed, I have seen buyers walk away due to the inspection results. So now, you are starting all over again trying to find a new buyer. There's no reason to do things the wrong way. We understand how the process works to do it right the first time. So nobody is waiting around and everyone has realistic expectations. Okay, so what is a loan modification? Does loan modification stop foreclosure? Well, we're just going to give you some basic items about what a loan modification is. A modification, a loan modification is a process where the terms of a mortgage are modified outside the original terms of the contract agreed to by the lender or borrower. In general, any loan can be modified. If you are not paying your mortgage, the foreclosure process will continue, although a loan modification is in progress. Please understand that. Just because you might be in a loan modification and trying to do a loan modification, if you're not paying your mortgage, the foreclosure process is still happening. Okay? So you really need to consider the following points. The first point is the main purpose of processing a loan modification is that your hardship is temporary. In most cases, the modification of your loan will only change your payment by $100 to $200 per month. If you are not currently employed, it will be difficult to be approved for a loan modification. The entire goal to a loan modification is to keep your home and not sell it. If your financial hardship is not temporary, a loan modification will not be your best solution. If you are on unemployment income, your mortgage company may have a special program during this time. Again, if your unemployment is temporary, um, there are special programs through some banks that have an unemployment program. Okay, so how does someone get qualified for a short sale? This is a quick response. The homeowner must have more debt than income on a monthly basis and be able to prove this through written documentation. The informative and educated response for all of you is the homeowner should request a free 30 to 40 minute phone consultation with Mariah Martin, who is myself, our certified distressed property expert or one of my staff, who will consult with the homeowner using a 34 homeowner questionnaire that will not only assist the seller and answer many questions about the short sale process, but help Mariah and her staff in determining if a short sale is the right option for the homeowner at this time. That is the absolute best way to discuss your particular situation because every person's situation is different. So how to interview a real estate agent to help you with a, a short sale? So let's educate you about some unknown facts. So number one, a short sale can be negotiated by anyone that the seller gives authorization to help them in the state of Pennsylvania. But just because someone who is licensed to sell real estate does not qualify them to help you process and close on a short sale transaction. Number two, the shocking truth. 80% of licensed real estate agents in the United States have no knowledge about how to qualify, provide solutions, and or process a short sale for a homeowner. If a real estate agent claims they can process your short sale, along with no additional team support, they should have taken the certified distressed property expert training, which, is, which was just released in 2009. You should also have the support of an attorney at no out-of-pocket cost to you. So this is the only type of training a real estate, there's some other training, but this training is a very detailed training, and it teaches a real estate agent how to qualify a homeowner how to take them through the process, how to contact a bank, a bank, how to pull title, how to do the job right, okay, and how to negotiate with the bank. I don't suggest that method because your real estate agent, your listing agent, 
Their primary job, again, as we mentioned earlier, is to find the buyer for your home. Okay? So if they're talking to the bank, they're not finding a buyer for your home. So that's why you need a team. Okay? And if they do claim it, make sure they have this education behind them. Number three, the only way, okay, in our opinion, when selecting your real estate team is to help you avoid foreclosure via short sale, you need the following educated real estate team and nothing less. It will give you the best shot at successfully closing on your short sale. Everyone is needed and everyone must work as a team for the same goal. You must have on your team a short sale expert. You must have a listing agent. You must have a qualified and educated title agent, an attorney, and then of course your short sale processor, a short sale negotiator, yourself being an engaged seller, and the right buyer. It takes this entire team to get a short sale closed successfully and with the least amount of stress as possible. So what is a short sale negotiator and what do they do? Well, I could talk to you all day about how short sales are negotiated and, and all the things they do, but I'm just going to give you the overview and the most important information so you get the keys that you need in order to make the decision to contact and know who to contact in reference to just finding out a little bit more information for you or somebody you, you love, okay, that may be in a situation where they are having a difficult time paying their mortgage, either now or in the future. A short sale negotiator, sometimes referred to as a short sale processor, is someone whose only full-time job, which is 40 hours per week, seven days a week, is to talk to mortgage companies every day for the purpose of facilitating and negotiating on the behalf of the homeowner to successfully obtain written short sale approval that is acceptable to the seller, homeowner, and buyer of the property. Primary pay, primarily, they're paid hourly, but in most cases, they make a bonus when a short sale is successfully closed. So they, they make a small hourly rate, and then when, so they're motivated to close the short sale and get a short sale approval. They're then given a bonus. Okay? So what is the listing agent's primary focus? It's, a, it's really important that you understand why this process works this way. The listing agent's primary focus, they're paid full commission on the sales price of a home sold. So they're motivated by selling and listing as many homes as they can. So that's how they get paid. Okay? So that's why you hire them. The short sale expert's primary focus, which is my primary focus in this role, we are also paid by commission from the listing agent to qualify homeowners for a short sale, coordinating the file submission, and educating all parties throughout the process. Okay? What is the attorney's primary focus? Well, the attorney is paid by the seller's mortgage company once the short sale is closed. Okay? To protect the homeowner's best interest and explain any liabilities that the seller may assume as part of the final written short sale approval letter prior to seller acceptance and closing. So now you understand all the members on your team and what their focus should be and why you need to have a team working for you on a short sale to avoid foreclosure. Now let's look at how is a short sale negotiated? Now, I'm just giving you a basic overview and an average, you know. Let's focus on the general timeline of a short sale once a buyer offer is received on the property, okay? Now, buyer, the buyer offer uh, receives terms that will be accepted by the seller and the seller's mortgage company not all offers will be accepted. There are short sale guidelines you should follow. So what we're saying here is that when a buyer offer is, is written and it's presented to the listing agent and the seller, that offer must have terms, special terms in it, 
that would be accessible to the bank. And I, I don't believe, we're not going to go through that in this um, webinar, but that is something that's really important because not all offers are going to get accepted. The special short sale terms that need to go in the agreement, okay? So that's something that we'll discuss at a later point on a case-by-case -case basis. But, you know, what happens when the buyer offer is signed by the seller and sent to the bank? Well, the first 30 days is a file review period, so nothing much happens. It goes to the bank with all the necessary paperwork, and then the bank has their processors that they check off on a list that all the documents are completed correctly and everything is available to them, even their bank-specific paperwork. So it's important for everybody to know what is required as a short sale package. And every bank is different, okay? So in any case, that's 30 days. And typically at the end of that 30 days or the beginning of the second month, and the negotiator is assigned to the file. Then within 30 to, uh, I'm sorry, within 45 to 60 days, the property evaluation is established. And that's established by the bank ordering a third party to go out to the property in the form of an appraisal or a BPO, which stands for Broker Price Opinion, in order for them to evaluate what the current market value is on the property. Because short sales are sold within 5 to 15 percent below current market value, nothing under that. And they want to get as close to current market value as possible because we already know current market value for your property is well under what you owe on the loan. So they really deserve to get as close to current market value as possible, and that's an as-is condition. So they'll get the value, and then typically on average, two weeks after that evaluation is conducted, you'll be hearing from the bank. And you'll be, they'll compare it to the offer on the table, and they'll say, okay, they'll either counter it or reject it. Um, you know, they're rejected or they'll counter it. And then, you know, they're negotiating with the buyer at that point. And then within the 60 to 90 days, um, you're looking at the counter offer, the negotiations, and then, of course, the written bank approval if we're able to come to an oral agreement with the buyer. And then at that point, once the oral agreement has happened, okay, then they prepare for a written approval, which typically takes a week to two weeks later. And then that written bank approval is given to the seller and our attorney that represents you at no out-of-pocket cost to make sure you understand the terms of what you're signing and that there's nothing, you know, they're not going to come back and try and get the difference between what your property sold for and what you owe. So basically if you owe, let's say you owe $200,000 on the property, on the mortgage, but the property sells for $150,000, because that's current market value. Well, if you don't read that bank approval correctly, it could say that they could come ask you for a deficiency judgment or civil same as a civil judgment for fifty thousand dollars, and they can collect that from you. So if that's not reviewed by an attorney, you're not going to know that that's a you know possibility. So in any case, at that point, um, that's one of our basic negotiating techniques. Just so you know, we negotiate to make sure that our sellers on our letters that they cannot come back to you for deficiency judgment and collect anything from you. So that's one of our basic techniques, but we still have the attorney review it because it's very legal. So once you have approved that bank approval letter, written bank approval letter, then we forward that to the buyer and the buyer's agent, and they prepare for settlement. If there's a loan, then 30 to 45 days from that written bank approval, is when they'll have to close on the property. If it's a cash transaction, then they'll be expected to close in two weeks. Okay? Now, before we leave this page, all loans and mortgage companies have different systems. This is just a general outline of events in most cases, just to give you an idea on the average. Now, how long does, it, does a short sale take? While all short sales are different, it depends on how many liens and or judgments are attached to the property, what type of loan the homeowner currently has, and when we get an offer from the ultimate buyer for the property. But below, we will give you a general overview of the entire process. Okay? 
So the first step is uh, the property is being marketed. Let's say on average in the Lehigh Valley, it takes about 90 days to find a buyer for a property. The important point to remember is no showings mean no offers. And showings with no offers, we should get a price reduction. Price reductions should happen monthly at minimum, okay? Because the whole goal here is to prove to the bank that we're trying at current market value, but we continue to watch the property. If we don't get showings or we don't get offers, we have to continue to reduce the uh, property in small increments to, until we get an offer. And then we're able to prove to the bank that we did our job. We tried to get them as much money as possible um, with this type of method. The next phase is a buyer offer comes in. Now we're giving you an example here with a buyer offer with one lien, okay? Typically the standard is three to four months if there's only one lien, okay? So as we show on an earlier slide, it takes about 90 days on average for one lien to be negotiated. Two liens add another 30 days, so this is how we come up with a three to four months, okay? And then, after the seller has discussed a final written bank approval letter with the attorney provided to them at no out-of-pocket cost to them, this approval is then accepted by the seller. The buyer can prepare for settlement, and that's typically 30 to 45 days. So basically the entire process, if you add it up here, is about seven to eight months. Okay? Now obviously it all depends on when we get that buyer offer, if we get it faster, then the process is faster. If we get a buyer offer and they're not, they're not the right type of buyer and they don't want to wait around for three to four months, even though in the beginning they said they would, and they drop off and they you know, basically terminate the contract, then we're going to have to start all over with another buyer. So that's why in the beginning we need to make sure all parties are educated as to how short sales are handled and everyone needs to make sure that they're committed for the buyers need to be committed for um, 90 days at least, 60 to 90 days at least. I prefer 90 to 120 days, but 90 days at least they need to be committed because that's how long a short sale takes on average if it's being done right. So there's no sense in taking an offer from a buyer where they say they're just going to give us 30 days to get bank approval because it's not going to happen. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of our time. Okay? All right, let's go to the next slide. So what can stop foreclosure? Does bankruptcy stop foreclosure? Well, it's no. But bankruptcy does a great job of stalling foreclosure. In some cases where a short sale cannot not successfully be negotiated, Prior to a short sale being approved by the seller's mortgage company, a bankruptcy could be an option for a seller to postpone the share of sale after all other resources have been exhausted. Another reason why having an attorney represent you during the short sale at no out-of-pocket cost to you is a smart move. Does a short sale stop foreclosure? A closed short sale does stop foreclosure. But if a homeowner has stopped paying their mortgage after 90 days delinquent, the homeowner will get a notice of default stating that if the loan is not paid current, the mortgage company will proceed with foreclosure, which in the state of Pennsylvania takes 12 to 14 months on average. Okay? All right. Now, we also said we were going to talk about short sale scams and how to avoid them. We'd like you to understand what kind of scams are out there so you're educated and you know you don't get taken advantage of. Okay? So short scam number one is called flopping. Okay? Um, flopping victims are the sellers and the lenders. Okay? The, prep, the um, perpetrators are the real estate agents and the buyers. Okay? Red flags about this situation is double escrows, where the buyer is an LLC company, or a fictitious entity, or purchasing under a power of attorney. Purchase agreement gives the buyer option to resell the property. OK? 
Okay. So if you're currently working with somebody, like a real estate agent that is working on their own, and you have an agreement of sale with this kind of stuff, I mean, you're going to be able to tell that's a red flag. So in any case, obviously you're not going to have to worry about this stuff if you're working with our team. But again, you want to make sure you're educated because there are people out there doing this to the sellers and lenders. So how does it work? Swapping occurs when a short sale is approved based on a misrepresentation of the value of the property. In a typical swapping fraud, the fraudster is the buyer purchasing the property from the short sale seller. In some cases of swapping, their seller's real estate agent is the buyer. The fraudster presents a low offer to purchase the property to the lender along with the artificially low valuation of the property in order to convince the lender that the property is worth less than it really is. Okay? Meanwhile, any higher offers from bona fide buyers are withheld from the lender. Since the lender would most likely reject the low offer if it knew that higher offers were on the table, once the lender approves the short sale at the artificially low price, the fraudster contacts the bona fide buyer or markets the property at its true market value. Without the short sale lender's knowledge, a second escrow between the fraudster as the seller and a bona fide buyer is then open to close simultaneously with the first purchase or soon thereafter. This is also known as a double settlement. Okay? The perpetrator of the fraud buys low, sells high, and keeps the difference between the two sales prices. Okay? But when we, when we um, handle a short sale, number one, we have an attorney representing all of us, so we can't do anything wrong. Number two, we know that the banks, we know we won't even, even um, accept offers below 15% below current market value and as is conditioned because we know the bank's not going to accept it, okay? So let's go over. There's one other one I'd like to review with you. Let's see, the next. This is another one that you should be aware of. Predatory short sale negotiators. The victims are the sellers and the buyers. The perpetrators are the short sale negotiators and the real estate agents. The red flags are upfront fees, like thousands of dollars, like $2,000, $3,000 required from the seller. The fees are required to be paid outside of escrow and negotiator is not licensed. Okay? This is how it works. Sellers considering short sales are particularly vulnerable to con artists hoping to take advantage of their stressful situation. These con artists calling themselves short sale negotiators, the short sale processors, short sale coordinators, short sale expediters, debt negotiators, debt resolution experts, loss mitigation practitioners, or foreclosure rescue negotiators guarantee results for a flat fee. So you pay them to do their job. The bank does not pay them, okay? Or a percentage of the sale price. Oftentimes, the short sale negotiator takes the fee and does nothing or little in return. So that is another, you know, that is another thing to be aware of. If anybody contacts you and says that, yeah, sure, I can get you out of this mess and avoid foreclosure if you give me two grand. You know, thousand, two thousand, three thousand, whatever, and then they don't do anything for you. Um, unfortunately, I've also seen this by um, with attorneys. In fact, I just had a situation where I represented the buyer, and the seller was using an attorney because they thought just because it was an attorney, they knew how to negotiate short sales and they did it right. Well, unfortunately, we've been waiting sixty days for. Um, the valuation, you know, we're at the 60-day mark now where the BPO or appraiser should be going out to the property, and we just found out that the attorney never even sent the file into the bank. So now they're pulling the file, and the listing agent with my assistant is going to negotiate the file, and we're going to pull title uh, this week, actually. And, um, you know, so you just never know. If you're not working with an entire team of people, as described in this uh, webinar, 
um, it's not being done the right way in my professional opinion. So the number of ways to avoid the number one way to avoid short sale scams is to have an attorney represent you at no out of pocket cost to you. This attorney is provided when working with our real estate team, and you will never need to worry about any scams like this. So what's your next step? Well, your next step is if you're on this call for, for, for yourself, um, your next step is to contact us for a private consultation. If you're on this call for a friend, have your friend come and listen. This, you know, this is being recorded, so we're going to have this pasted all over the Internet. Um, how do you request a consultation? Well, the number one way would be to contact the real estate agent sponsor who invited you here. Okay. Number two, you can call or text our short sale where to find. We will contact you within 24 hours, and the number for that line is 484-985-9805. It is a, a voicemail service, a Google voicemail service, that we have set up just for our short sale awareness clients, and it's checked on a regular basis. We will contact you within 24 hours. And the third way would be shoot us an email at shortsaleawareness at gmail.com. That comes directly to me, Mariah Martin, and um, we can uh, take the next step with you. Again, it's a private phone consultation. If you would like to meet in person, we can, but typically we do a private phone consultation with you. It takes typically 30 to 40 minutes over the phone. We go through the series of questions with you that will not only educate you about the process, but it will also educate us and make sure a short sale is your best solution. If it's not, we're going to tell you. This is not your best solution, okay? So when are more live webinars scheduled? Because if you're listening to a recording, maybe you have some questions and you want to come back on here and answer, um, ask some questions live, and we can answer those questions live. And all of our sponsors are always on the webinar um, uh, every single month. We have two webinars a month. Okay, so here's some information for you, or if you know somebody, this webinar can help. Um, they can come to our live webinar schedule. We will be posting a recording in the future for our, on our Facebook site, which is facebook.com slash Lehigh Valley Short Sale. Our um, webinar times um, are listed here. Um, obviously, right now we're in October, so today is Wednesday, October 10th, and this is when we're recording our webinar. We have another one coming up on Saturday, October 13th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Wednesday, November 14th from 6.30 to 7.30. Saturday, November 10th from 10 to 11. Wednesday, December 12th, 6.30 to 7.30. And again, Saturday, December 8th from 10 to 11 a.m. And we will have our New Year schedule out um, as of uh, November for the latest December 12th. And then thank you for joining us. I appreciate your time, and um, I'd like to just thank our sponsors again. Thank you for so much for being on our live questions. We're not going to have that recorded just because um, I don't want to waste anybody's time here on the recorded portion. But um, uh, again, your host, Mariah Martin, it's my pleasure to help educate you about the short sale process. Uh, Reggie Regulus, thank you so much for being on the line with us today, and Dan Litt. Um, John Dahlgren and Scott Tomlinson, thank you so much for your support in putting this consumer webinar together. Because when you're dealing with something as, part, as important as your home, you need the right real estate professionals helping you one step at a time. Thank you, everybody. And I hope this information was helpful to you. And we look forward to helping you in the future.